Hi, it's Father Lou from St. Julie Billiard Parish, reaching out to everyone and this crazy time of trying to confront the coronavirus. I, I know that many of us feel a little bit isolated and disconnected because of the necessary steps we have to take in order to stem the spread of the virus, social distancing as they call it. And I thought perhaps uh, we would take some time each week um, in the middle of the week to just share with you some thoughts of what's going on here at the parish as we try to continue to do our mission and our work, as well as to offer some, hopefully, hopefully some thoughts of suggestions of how we might still feel connected and stay together as we go through this uh, health crisis in, in, in our country and, and around the world. Uh, I thought uh, to begin with tonight, uh, today, I would like to just uh, start with prayer because prayer is so important. Prayer is what we're called to do as faithful disciples of Jesus. And praying is uh, one of the ways in which I think we stay together in this moment. Uh, praying for one another, praying for all those who are infected by the virus, uh, praying for those uh, who have died from the virus, uh, praying for the doctors, the nurses, the police officers, the firefighters, the, the scientists who are all on the front line of trying to help us overcome the coronavirus. Pray as well for our government leaders that they may have the wisdom to help us to implement what is necessary for the better, uh, betterment of us all, for the health of us all. Uh, and so prayer is such an important part and I think it connects us to one another. And, and so let's begin our time uh, today just with a brief prayer. And I'm gonna use the words that Pope Francis used. Uh, he wrote a prayer as uh, the outbreak was going on in the Diocese of Rome and when they made the decision to suspend all of their masses, uh, he prayed uh, this prayer asking for the intercession of Blessed Mother and I think it applies to us all. And so let us begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, at the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, salvation of all people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide so that as you did at Cana in Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test, and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Again, I think prayer is one of the ways in which we are connected at this time. And I invite you to definitely each day, consciously, deliberately, intentionally, take time to pray. Ask God for inter intervention into this crisis that we are facing. Lift up those who we know and who we don't know, those in our own country and those around the world who are struggling with this new virus that we are all under the pandemic's concern. I wanna assure you of some of the things that we're trying to do our best here at the parish uh, to keep us moving forward and to keep us close together. Obviously, on Sundays, we have the 9.30 Mass that we are live streaming, and we were very happy to see uh, many other folks uh, from other parishes around the diocese uh, joining us for our 9.30 Mass. We will continue to do that uh, even once we are able to gather together, together again uh, as a community of faith. We started this back in November, uh, not realizing how important that would be to us in a moment like this. Uh, it is for those who can't be with us, and to, certainly today, uh, with the concern and caution of the virus, we are uh, very blessed to be able to do this. And I, I thank uh, those who are helping us to make sure that uh, we can reach out and communicate with everybody. Uh, part of our praying together, uh, the Mass in particular, which I know many of us miss, uh, is we do pray for daily Mass intentions and certainly our Sunday Mass intentions. And I want to assure you that those intentions are indeed being prayed for. Our daily Mass intentions are prayed for in a private Mass, either by Father Tone or myself. Uh, so we are offering a Mass here at St. Julie every day, 
uh, praying for the intentions that we have been requested to pray for, as well as obviously praying uh, for everyone in this moment of crisis. And so our daily Mass intentions are prayed for in a private Mass by one of the parish priests each and every day. You may want to participate in daily Mass, which is certainly uh, a great opportunity to feel connected. Uh, and to do so, there are a couple options uh, for you to do that. Uh, two that I would simply mention is that the Archdiocese of Chicago from the Chapel of St. James, which is in the Pastoral Center, is broadcasting a live stream of the daily Mass at 10 a.m. Uh, you can find that Mass on the Archdiocesan website, archchicago.org. Uh, and again, that Mass is uh, celebrated at 10 a.m. each day. Uh, and then it remains online, uh, so if you like, can't see it at 10 o'clock and like to watch it later in the day, you can certainly participate in that way. Another option, a new option that I just learned of earlier today is uh, Bishop Bob Barron, who we know very well uh, from being a Chicago priest uh, and his work with the Word on Fire Ministries is going to live stream uh, Mass from uh, the, his private chapel uh, in the studios of Word on Fire. Uh, either he or Father Steve Grineau will be presiding at those Masses. Uh, and again, you can go to wordonfire.org and find information there about those daily Masses. And so you do have the opportunity to celebrate daily Mass, uh, and those are two wonderful opportunities, either through the Archdiocese or through Word on Fire Ministries. As again, on Sunday, we will continue to offer our 930 Mass, uh, and we will do so uh, praying for all of the intentions that we received for Sunday. So all the Masses that have received intentions, we will gather them all into the intentions for the Mass at 930. We will share those intentions as we usually do uh, before we begin the Mass. So I want to assure everyone who has made a request for a Mass intention that those intentions are indeed being prayed for. Another area that we've had to make changes is the fact that uh, because of needing to social distance ourselves and we are trying to minimize uh, exposure to one another, uh, we have changed our office hours temporarily. Uh, we still have office hours on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and now Friday. Our office is gonna be open from 8.30 in the morning until 12 noon. On Wednesday, we'll have afternoon evening office hours from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. We would ask that if you do need to visit the office, please know that we're not inviting people into the office. All the business will be conducted through the window as you come in the door. Another thing that we've had to do is to limit our staffing. Uh, some staff members are in high-risk categories and they've been told to work from home as much as they possibly can. Other staff members are here on a limited basis. We've limited it to just three or four or at most five people in the office at, the, and at, any, one, at any one time. And so if you call in uh, or send an email, uh, you may not get the immediate response that we would like to give to you, but we will respond to you. We're not ignoring you. It's just that we aren't able to, uh, to respond to everybody as quickly as we would like because not everybody is in the office as they normally are. And we're also not honestly set up to be able to do a lot of work from home. We are encouraging all of our employees to do their work as best they can from home. Uh, but above all, we want to make sure that everybody is safe and everybody is taken care of. Some other areas that, just to let you know, are concerns of ours. Uh, we do want to certainly visit those uh, folks who are sick, but unfortunately at this time, many of the hospitals have closed uh, access to facilities and are only allowing visitors in dire circumstances. In fact, just last night, I was called down to Lurie Children's Hospital to visit one of our parishioners and had to get approved before I went down to the city in order to visit them. Uh, because the, that is a hospital that is on lockdown. Uh, I'm just trying to let you know that it, it may be difficult for us to get there, uh, not because we don't want to be there, but because of the concerns of spreading of the virus. Uh, in many cases, there are a lot of institutions that we no longer have easy access to. Uh, we will certainly pray for anyone uh, that we are aware of, and if possible, we will make those uh, visits. Uh, to anoint uh, and to be with families, uh, especially in moments when someone is in grave crisis. Uh, at this time, we've also are going to have to suspend our home visits, so our ministers of care won't be able to come and visit the folks who normally receive those visits at home. Again, these are all precautions that we need to take in order to minimize the spread of the coronavirus. We currently, at least as of this time, are awaiting some further guidelines from the Archdiocese regarding funerals. Uh, those celebrations are so important to families that are grieving 
and yet uh, we know that uh, we have to minimize the number of folks who are gathering together in crowds and being together. Uh, so currently we still are accepting funerals, but we are also anticipating further guidance from the Archdiocese uh, where we may have to alter some of those practices as well. Uh, we're very sorry about that, but again, these are all precautions that we need uh, to take care of uh, to make sure that we are all remaining healthy. Um, I wanted to offer some other thoughts uh, about what do we do? <laughs> what do we do in this time when uh, all of a sudden we find ourselves at home, in many cases stuck at home, uh, with a lot of extra time on our hands. Even if we're working from home, uh, there's a lot of times that uh, we, we can only do so much and then we, we have to do something else. Um, so just some thoughts uh, on that. And, and I think uh, one of the things that I, I would go back to is certainly inviting you to pray. Maybe take a deliberate time to pray with your family. Uh, take a time to pray the rosary or to read the Bible, uh, to um, simply meditate and ask God's blessings upon us in this time of trial. Um, prayer is such a powerful piece of our faith life and our faith journey. And so I invite you to each day, make sure you're taking some time to pray um, because it also connects us to the wider church and the wider world. So some of the free time, maybe find an opportunity to pray. Read a good book, but especially a good Catholic book. Read the Bible. <laughs> get the words of inspiration that uh, we need, the re words of reassurance, uh, reassurance that we need from, from the Lord in this time of trial. Uh, if you haven't been in the practice of reading the Bible on a regular case, this is a perfect opportunity to pick that up and, and start to thumb through and, and find uh, the inspiration we need from God's word in this time. Uh, otherwise, pick another good Catholic book. I, I know uh, folks aren't necessarily running out to the bookstore. Uh, most of us get our books these days by Amazon, so uh, take and order a good Catholic book, as Matthew Kelly would say to us. Uh, read a good Catholic book for inspiration and for hope and for help. Another thing would be, uh, you know, just instead of just binge watching uh, some latest TV show, uh, look on Netflix and other uh, uh, platforms in order to find good Catholic movies or good Christian movies, uh, movies about the lives of the saints. Uh, be inspired in that way. Uh, binge watch something holy in a sense. Uh, that's another opportunity to use some of the time. I think one of the things that I know that I have started to do uh, is, uh, you know, we always have this, this is actually the time of doing a lot of spring cleaning. And uh, I, I think that uh, as you do spring cleaning, especially with uh, as the kids at home, uh, maybe this time around as you're doing it, really think about is what do you have, what is really necessary? I think what we're learning, one of the things I'm learning in this moment is to really ask myself, what is important and what is truly necessary and what do I really need to let go? What can I let go of? Uh, and so maybe uh, as you're looking for activities and decide, well, maybe we're going to tackle that closet in the hallway, maybe do so with a new uh, sense of, of urgency to go through and really let go. Let go of the things that aren't necessary. I think it's both a practical uh, uh, application, but it's also it can be a spiritual application in that we look into our hearts and our, our souls and we say, what is really necessary? And of course, what is most necessary is our relationship with Jesus and how do we deepen that. So what are the things we need to let go of? What are the things that we can uh, share with others so that they can benefit from our access in order uh, that they, they can be, have their needs met? So those are a few ideas. Uh, another thing that I would just simply mention, um, I, I just saw a little while ago uh, on Twitter, uh, a thing called Faith Over Fear. Faith Over Fear, it's a hashtag Faith Over Fear. Uh, and, and what it is is saying that we want to have faith, not fear in this moment. And, and the faith that I would want us to uh, think about uh, is how do we apply that? And, and so it asks really uh, two questions and one challenge. The two questions are, who are you praying for right now? Going back to that importance of prayer in our life at this moment. Who are you praying for? Who are the people uh, that are, are in your mind and your heart that need to be lifted up to Jesus? Uh, that we need to really ask God's blessings upon. Whether it be about the coronavirus or another illness or another situation and the anxiety of losing jobs and such, whatever the case may be, who are you praying for? And really think about those people and ask God's blessings upon them. Lift them up to the Lord in your mind and your heart. The second challenge or opportunity that faith over fear uh, presents is um, who are you reaching out to? You know, yes, we are all kind of isolated at home in many ways, but 
we do have phones, we do have uh, emails, uh, we can write letters. Uh, who are we reaching out to? You know, use this opportunity to reach out to somebody, not only to just check on their well-being and see how they are, our neighbors and such, uh, our family members, but, but maybe take the opportunity to reach out to somebody that we haven't talked to in a long time. Uh, I had a phone call uh, from a former parishioner that I haven't talked to in honestly probably two, three years. It's just really a wonderful opportunity to, to speak with them and get to hear what their life is entailing at this point and also to reassure them and be reassured by them that uh, we're holding each other in prayer. So who are the people that you can reach out to and what are the ways you can do that? Again, a phone call, maybe an email, a text, or writing a letter. In some ways, reaching out to others. Uh, use the opportunity because we're often so busy that we don't take the time to make those calls to reach out and make those connections that are so necessary in our lives. And the challenge then is not only who are we praying for or who are we reaching out to, but can we at, figure out three other people, three other people that you know, family, friends, neighbors, that you could issue the challenge to them as well. Ask them the question, who are you praying for? And who are you reaching out to in this moment that we find ourselves in? Another area that I, I'd like to just comment on is, is that I know there's a lot of anxiety and fear. I know that there's a lot of worry. And uh, I ran across a, a, an article that listed some things that we should th be thinking about to take care of ourselves in this moment, uh, to take care of ourselves, to make sure that we, we don't allow the anxiety and the fear to overcome us. And so just some of the suggestions from this article that I think would be helpful for us. Um, again, find new ways to communicate. Uh, reach out in different ways. Uh, you know, keep to your daily routine as much as possible. You know, we like our routines. Uh, and so the more we can stay rooted in our routine, uh, the less the anxiety can, can overcome us. Uh, focus on what we can control, right? There's so much that we can't control in this moment, but if we focus on what we can't control, that will ease our anxiety about what we can't. Uh, be gentle with yourself and be gentle with others. I know that the time of anxiety and fear, that, that that gets the better of us. We've experienced that even in the office. We've received phone calls like, why didn't you have your information on the phone when in fact it was already on the phone? Uh, but they didn't listen to the message. Um, you know, we need to be kind to one another. We need to know that everybody is under a lot of stress and anxiety in this moment. So be gentle with yourself and be gentle with others. Um, Maybe hard, but cut back on the media. You know, we all want to be informed and informed well about what is going on, but we also don't want to be overcome because constantly all we're hearing is the bad news of the spread of the virus. Uh, it's one thing to watch maybe one news report, but it's another thing to sit down and watch a whole night of the news reports that just one after another can remind us of how serious this crisis is. So keep informed, but maybe not spend so much time watching the news. Get a distraction. That's why you need to watch a good Catholic movie or a movie about the life of the saints. Always keep things in perspective. Recognize that what's important is certainly our relationship with the Lord. Keep things in perspective. Practically speaking, make sure you have enough medication and enough things that are essential for life. Uh, and then lastly, this article suggested that we should know that a little bit of anxiety isn't really a bad thing. It really makes us forces us to be prepared and to look at these things. And so uh, we don't want to be overly burdened by anxiety or fear or restlessness or worry, um, but it's good to know that uh, we do have a little bit because that challenges us to look at ourselves and to look at the world around us and to try to make the world a better place, especially as we do so with our prayer and our love and our concern for one another. Finally, I would just invite you uh, to keep checking our website, uh, to look at Facebook. Um, we will try to share as much information as we can as we receive it. Um, and we wanna make sure that when we receive information, it's good information uh, to share. Uh, so we will do our best to communicate uh, in many different ways. When you go on our website, stjulie.org, you will be able to uh, see our weekly bulletin. We will still be uh, putting together a bulletin, uh, so you'll be able to at least read it online. Um, but uh, we do want to stay connected to you, and we want you to be connected to us. 
And so uh, if you can, send us an email, send us a note, uh, give us a call, whatever it takes. We want to make sure that you know that we are here for you. You are in our thoughts and you are in our prayers. Uh, and together we are going to get through this. In the end, it is the work of the Lord that we are all about. And we know that we are in the Lord's hands. We know that Jesus is watching over us. And that is a great comfort to us as we go through this crisis as a community, as a world community. Uh, and so we want to trust in the Lord and we want to find security in the Lord. And we want to make sure that we know we are part of that community, uh, which is so blessed to be God's family, the church. We'll close again today with a prayer. Um, and the prayer that I'm going to close with is a prayer that was written by Archbishop Gomez. Uh, Archbishop Gomez is the Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and is currently serving as the president of the U.S. Catholic Conference of Bishops. Uh, this is a prayer that he wrote uh, in this moment of crisis and a prayer that uh, hopefully we can all hold on to and, and uh, certainly make our own. Know that you are daily in my thoughts and prayers and that of our parish community uh, and we are going to hopefully try to reach out to you at least once a week in these midweek uh, updates or midweek moments or fireside chats, whatever you like to call them. Uh, but for now, we simply ask God's blessing upon you as together we uh, open our minds and our hearts to God's presence as we pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding at Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and our world and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms and help us always to know the love of your son, Jesus. Amen. God bless.